The Chinese are quite particular about dining. Thanks to their love of food, there is an astounding variety of Chinese cuisine, coupled with unique anecdotes and etiquette. And thus, a great nation of gourmet has come into being. Chilies are widely used in cooking. Yet chilies have only been grown in China for 400 years. The town of Hui Shui is situated in Sichuan province. The annual chili harvest begins here in August. In Sichuan, chilies are called peppers from overseas. Research has shown that chilies were indeed first brought to China by ship. Chilies arrived in China during the Ming Dynasty between 1368 and 1644. First reference to them is found in the eight treatises on the nurturing of life, written by the late 16th century writer Gao Lian. Originally though, the chili was seen as an ornamental plant. Cornel was instead used as a spice. Cornel mostly grows on uncultivated land and is hard both to harvest and to cook. This may be one reason why it was replaced by chili. China is now the world's biggest producer and consumer of chilies. Widely grown in the country's central and western regions, chilies are supplied across the country. But some chilies are taken somewhere quite mysteriously. In Santai County, near where the chilies grow, an underground factory produces a special food. Sao Feng Su is the owner. <laughs> The sound Sao refers to comes from the large earthen jars containing their main product, pickled chilies. Sichuan has a long-standing reputation for its pickles. In ancient times, the Chinese discovered that healthy lactic acid bacteria grew readily in vegetables preserved through pickling. The bacteria also gave the pickles their uniquely salty and sour flavour. In Sichuan, pickled chilies soon became a key ingredient in cooking.
The Sao family has a long history of pickle making. Sao Feng Su has succeeded in increasing production capacity and establishing his products as a famous local brand. The chili harvest is usually the busiest time of the year at Sal's factory. To guarantee supplies and the quality of the chilies, Sal provides the farmers with seeds and fertilizers in spring and buys what they grow at the market price. Although Sal's approach to doing business is different, he preserves the traditional pickling technique he acquired from his ancestors. Now the chilies can be put into jars. The age-old skill is shrouded in mystery, but conducted in a glass jar, the process becomes more obvious. The chilies are arranged in five layers. Each layer is lightly salted, and the homemade spice packets are sandwiched between them. Then the jar is sealed with plastic film. The longer it is sealed, the better the lactic acid will ferment. Water is sprinkled along the edge of the jar to maintain the seal's tightness and cool the contents. The pickling process lasts anywhere from 3 to 12 months. The pickle jar is an essential household item in Sichuan, but these days few pickle makers use the same jars as Tsao does. With Sichuan cuisine and chilies becoming more widely popular, many factories have replaced their jars with cement pools in order to increase production. However, the pickles made in pools are a lot cheaper. Looking good, they sell at a higher margin. Even so, Cao Feng Tzu has no intention of changing his methods. As the chili craze has spread across China, more chili varieties have been introduced and cultivated. The new ones include the popular Da Hong Pao, Er Jing Tiao, Seven Stars, and Facing Heaven Peppers. Wu Kui Shu Chili City in the northern suburbs of Chengdu is among the largest chili markets in China. Chengdu is the capital of Sichuan, the province known throughout China for its spicy food. Little more than 20 years ago, however, Sichuan food was rarely found outside the southwest, and chilies were little known across other parts of the country. But that all changed in the early 1990s, when innovations were first introduced into Sichuan cuisine. Today, Sichuan food is found all across China. Best known, perhaps, is Malatang. 
Is spiciness the main component to Sichuan cuisine? Shu Zhengliang is a well-known chef and a culinary advisor for a high-end hotel. He leads a young team dedicated to innovating Sichuan cuisine. Shu began his cooking career when he was 14. He was taught by some expert chefs who helped him grasp the soul of Sichuan cuisine. In his view, Sichuan dishes, although characterized by their spicy flavor, depend more on flavoring. Any innovation that ignores this is bound to fail. Shu and his young colleagues regularly get together to discuss and practice traditional cooking techniques. Today, they will demonstrate how traditional Sichuan chili oil is made. To guarantee the quality of the oil, the choice of chilies is vital. However, it's the special cooking method that will create not only a subtly spicy flavor, but also an intense aroma. Firstly, the selected dried chilies are stir-fried. Chilies should be slightly burnt. The caramelized smell indicates the chilies are crispy. Now they're tipped out and crushed. The second step is to make a powder by grinding the chilies. The powder is separated into three plates. Next, we're ready to make the delicious oil. Pour in rapeseed oil. Chinese onion and mature ginger slices are added when the oil cools to below 160 Celsius. The burnt Chinese onion and ginger flakes should be removed. Then the spices are added among them. When the oil cools to about 120 Celsius, the chili powder from the first plate should be poured in. The powder, as it is submerged in the oil, begins to crackle and splutter. When the oil cools to below 100 Celsius, the second plate of powder should be added. Stirring the oil brings out the burnt aroma. As the oil cools further, the remaining powder is added, along with the stock prepared the previous day. With the oil and powder fully mixed together, a more intense aroma is given off. But the oil isn't ready to use yet. The oil can't be stored for longer than five days. Although some may wonder whether the effort is worth it, every step in the cooking process reflects a traditional understanding of spice and pursuit of flavor.
Sichuan cuisine has changed with time. Today, with its unrivaled spicy flavor, it's spreading aggressively and developing rapidly. Yet, Xu is worried. He believes the disappearance of tradition means the cuisine is misunderstood. He objects to any innovation that goes against the soul of the cuisine, represented by the combination of flavors. Fish-flavored shredded pork is a traditional dish embodying a specific combination of flavors. Besides pickled chilies and pork, the ingredients also include bamboo shoots and wood ear. Everything except the chilies needs to be shredded. Finally, Chinese onion is sprinkled over the top. Three seconds later, the ingredients are stir fried until they're evenly mixed. The spicy dish's flavor is delicate, salty, and sweet, a unique combination of flavors. Fish-flavored shredded pork reveals how Sichuan cuisine is about more than just spice. It also shows how chilies are used in an artistic way. Chilies play a prominent role in traditional Chinese recipes. These days, they are used in a more complex and exquisite way. And Sichuan dishes have become hotter as the popularity of spicy food has spread. So, why do people crave spicy food? Lan Yong is the director of the Institute of Historical Geography at Southwest University. His 10-year research has focused on China's fascination with spicy food. Lan has drawn a map on which China's regions are divided into three categories based on the popularity of spicy food. The map goes some way to explaining why people like spicy food. From Chinese tradition, So maybe the relationship among diet, climate, and environment explains the traditional popularity of spicy food in areas like Sichuan. But Lan has found that its popularity has, 
while intensifying in the traditional spicy food dominated regions, also spread to other areas. Why do people today prefer spicier food? Is there a relationship between its popularity and the modern lifestyle? Scientists have been trying to find the answers. Studies show that when we eat food made with chilies, capsaicin, the active component of chilies, irritates our mouths and taste buds and produces a burning sensation. In response, our brains signal our pituitary glands to release endorphins, which ease the pain and excite us. In other words, we don't perceive the spice through our taste buds. Spicy food irritates and sensitizes our taste buds and nasal mucosa. That is why a moderate chili intake can increase the appetite. The magical effect of spicy food has attracted the attention of researchers in many different fields.四川最喜欢用的叫麻辣人参很愉悦的。哎呀，世间这个食物太好了，很美好，这个生活太美好了。Chilies came to China 400 years ago, but only in the past few decades have chilies become popular nationwide. Perhaps we are at the dawn of a brilliant new era for Chinese cuisine. What kind of food is tofu? With its bland flavor, how did it conquer our palates? And how has it kept up with the times to remain popular in China and around the world? Please join us for part four of Discovering Chinese Cuisine.